Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring And worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you We live for you Jesus the name Hey, good morning, and welcome to Crosspoint Online. We're so happy that you're worshiping with us today. Our team has been praying for you throughout the week that you may be filled with the grace and peace of Jesus. I'm Michael Perez, part of the pastoral staff at Crosspoint, and I would love to know where you're watching from. So in the comments below, let us know you're here by just telling us where you are. And as we wait for the service to begin, feel free to interact with one another. The service will start shortly. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Crosspoint, we've always talked about giving as an act of worship. Matthew 6.21 says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. In giving joyfully, we are saying we are putting our trust in God. And so giving is an act of worship. At Crosspoint, we have different ways for you to worship through giving. You can visit us at www.crosspointri.org and click the Give button. Uh, you can download the... Uh, if you prefer to text, you can text your gift to 401-200-3034-3034 Avenue, Newport, Rhode Island, 02840. If you would prefer to stop by the church and drop your gift off, you can do so using... Off. You can do so using the mail slot on the...
turn into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness you shine out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Our God is greater Our God is stronger God you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome and power
every storm You'll be faithful forevermore You have done great things And I know that you'll do it again For your promise is yes and amen done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We danced in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, you Hi CP Kids, I want to pray for you this week. I know it's been difficult, but we have much to rejoice about, as today is the day that Christ has risen from the grave. So Lord, we thank you for your son Jesus, who died on the cross, and today has risen from the dead. We share in his victory, Lord, and we thank you for all that he suffered so that we may have life. I pray for our children today. I pray that they would have a wonderful week this week. I pray that you would just calm them, give them peace, give them security, and know that we are thinking about them and we love them and we miss them so very much. And we hope to see them soon and we look forward to that day where we can all again be together. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Welcome to Easter Sunday, or as I prefer, Resurrection Sunday. What an unusual uh, time this is. You know, I've been going to Easter Sundays, uh, Resurrection Sunday since, you know, I was born. And one of the things that my family always did, we always dressed up on Easter Sunday. And, you know, this is very different and very unique and very unusual that we're not in the church together, that we're not fellowshipping together in a particular location. But the Bible reminds us that where there are two or three gathered in his name, uh, he's in the midst of us. And so Mary and I, we're here, we're praying, we're believing for you. You may be gathered around the computer. You may be gathered uh, with some friends and some family members. And we just want to say happy Easter. We're praying and believing that God's best is uh, for you, is ahead of you, that he's releasing his angels uh, to watch over you as well. You know, as I think back uh, during my times of growing up in church, I, I always thought that Easter was this amazing time. We realized that, you know, a couple of days ago was Good Friday and that Jesus had died on the cross. And three days later, he's up out of the grave and he's giving hope to those who believe in him. And I, we just want to share uh, our hope and we want to share our faith with you on today during this resurrection Sunday. You know, when we think about 
a Resurrection Sunday, we realize that uh, the sacrifice that Jesus has done, he has, he has given the ultimate sacrifice, he has gone to the cross, he has shed out his blood for all of mankind, for all of humanity, and here he is on Resurrection Sunday with all power, with all authority, because he's conquered both death, hell, and the grave. All power is now given to our Savior, Jesus Christ. During this time, we are all rediscovering God. We're reconnecting with God in, in different ways that we've never had to reconnect with him before. And I'm hoping that not only we're reconnecting with God, but we're re recon, uh, reconnecting with others as well. And because we're not meeting in a physical location, we can be not only connected in the spirit, but we can also be connected through you know things like social media that keep us uh, in contact with one another. And I, I want to encourage you to stay connected to the body of Christ. It's, it's very easy to get disconnected in this time and, and believing and trusting God uh, for your life. You know, the other thing I've discovered uh, during this time is that we are a very religious group of people. We go to church on Easter, um, but maybe we haven't been relational enough. You know, we go in and out of the building, but now we're, we're realizing how important, how vitally important each and every one of us are, you know, fellowship and Bible study and, and worship and all of those things. You know, maybe we took them for granted, but behind all of those are people. And so don't forget the people are the ones that make up the church. And so continue to be relational with those folks. You know, the other thing is that we're discovering family on a whole different level as well. And, you know, being shut in or, you know, shelter in place, we're finding out something very unique and very different that, you know, we're getting to know our family members a little bit more. We're reconnecting with them as well. You know, most people attend Easter service or Resurrection Sunday out of some religious obligation. But today we're sitting around our computers. We're realizing that we are the church, that the church is made of living individuals like you and me. And so I want us to go on this journey today and evaluate our personal relationship with Jesus and with each other. You know, Easter is about the resurrected Christ. You know that he made so that we can become the family of God. And so when we think about Easter, we don't just think about all the peripheral things. We think about the main character, the central character of the story is Jesus. The character of the story proved to all mankind that he had the power over death, hell, and the grave. Power over death, hell, and the grave us know that we have a savior unlike other people who have called themselves saviors who are still dead in the ground and is taking authority over it and the bible tells us this the same spirit that got jesus up out of the grave the whole of us. So no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, that same spirit is able to lift you up. Maybe you're dealing with depression, anger, disappointment, whatever it is the resurrection power of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. And so take and uh, knowing that. The other thing that, you know, as I was dealing with, with Easter and, and the reason why Jesus this idea of being qualified, why would he do it? You know, we are the unqualified and, and many people don't, you know, you may be wrestling with this, uh, this thought is that why would Jesus die for me? And those are some of the things that I was thinking about six it says when we were utterly helpless Christ came as helpless Christ came to not be willing to die for an upright person though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is really good but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were yet sinners say that while we were yet sin. He didn't wait for us to make a decision. He didn't wait for us to say, Lord, uh, I accept you. He goes, no, before you were even born, I had already made this decision to die on behalf of your sin. Not just our personal sins, but the sins of the world. He died for us before we ever chose him. He loved us before we ever loved him. 
Look at this in Romans 5 and 9. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will eventually save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of the Son while we were still his enemy, we will certainly be saved through the life of his Son. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. That's exciting. That not only did Jesus die for our sin, but he restored our relationship with God. The Bible says that we were once enemies of God, but through the blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ, through him conquering death, hell, and the grave, with him getting up out of the grave, with him getting all power and authority, guess what he did? He also reconciled us back to the Father. And he didn't just reconcile, he didn't just make it good. He says, we are now a friend of God. I don't know what you're feeling, I don't know what you're going through during this Resurrection Sunday, but I want you to know that you and I are friends of God. We're not enemy, God's not against us, we're his friend, we're his, we're his adopted children. And we can take comfort in knowing that, that this, this resurrection power that's on the inside of us through the Holy Spirit makes us not only a, 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 a joy heir of Jesus Christ, but it makes us a friend of God. Hallelujah. You know, before I became a Christian, and even afterwards, I struggled with being qualified for the grace of God. I even struggled when I became a pastor. You know, I was like, you know, how do I qualify? And so there were seven things that I was going through as I was struggling with my, my Christianity. Number one is, why would God choose me? I mean, there's no reason for God to choose me. There's nothing special about me. I know my wife thinks I'm special and I think she's special, but why would God choose me? Number two, my past is not perfect. <laughs> I made some mistakes yesterday and I'll probably make some more tomorrow. So neither is my past perfect or my present perfect, but God still died for me. Hallelujah. Number three, you don't have to be super holy to be a Christian. Look, when I go home at night, I don't look in a closet and there's not a red cape and there's not a red S under my shirt. No, it's flesh and blood. And so one of the things that I realized, I don't have to be super holy to be a Christian or a pastor because God does something amazing through the power of the Holy Spirit. See, he takes my, my natural and he puts his super on top of it. He takes my ordinary and he puts his extraordinary, or he puts his extra on it. And so now I can become a supernatural, extraordinary person of God, just like you. You may be feeling ordinary. You may be feeling, man, I'm trying to do this in the natural. But the Holy Spirit empowers each and every one of us. God's not looking for superheroes. God's just looking for people that are available. Number four was, I need the right credentials in order to be this person of God. And then I realized, yeah, I got a degree here and a degree there, and I got some, some plaques on the wall, but none of those are the right credentials. You know what I found out what the right credentials were? Was my heart. If my heart was right, I didn't need any other credentials. I didn't need any other thing to make me qualify. All I had to do was to trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Number five, a lot of times we think in order to be qualified, we have to come from the right family. My mom raised six boys by herself. We were in government housing most of our entire life. So on the surface, it doesn't look like I come from the right family, but when I connected with God, I, become, I became a member of the family of God. You too, as well. You are now family of God. Number six, maybe I'm the wrong color. Maybe God's not going to like me enough. Because, you know, I don't come from the right family and maybe I'm not, or the right gender or, you know, or I'm too old or I'm too young. God doesn't look at all of those things. The Bible says that God does not look at the outward appearance as man does, but God looks straight at our hearts. So God doesn't care because on the inside, we're all the same <clears throat> color. And number seven, I didn't think I was smart enough. You know, and some people say, well, you know what, I don't is God looking for really smart people or, you know, super intelligent people? Yeah. Is God looking for ordinary people like me and you? Absolutely. Is God looking for rich people? Yes. Is God looking for poor people? Absolutely. See, with God, God doesn't base it on any of those things. 
He's just saying, give me your heart. That's the only qualifications you need. You don't need all of this. You don't need a paper on the wall. You don't need to come from the right family. You don't need to be the right color because in God, we are all the same. If you ever went on an interview, and I know I have for uh, a high paying job, one of the things that your resume does is get you through the door. No company interviews someone that they don't feel is qualified. They interview you not because of your qualifications. They interview you to see if you fit into their corporate culture. They want to know, do you fit in? And if you have the right credentials and you have the right character and they feel like you fit in better than all the other candidates, then they hire you. But Jesus died for us while we were still unqualified, while we were still sinners and are still sinning. He still died for us. Here's something amazing. Jesus didn't interview us first and then offer us salvation. He didn't say, okay, let me see if you qualify. Let me see if you got the right credentials. Let me see if you fit into this, this corporate culture called heaven. He didn't do any of those things. What he did was this. He said, I'm going to die for you whether you qualify for it or not. But the truth is, ladies and gentlemen, we could never qualify for it. That's why Jesus died on the cross for each and every one of us. That's what's amazing about Resurrection Sunday. That's what Easter's all about. Easter's all about God dying for the unqualified. It is that Resurrection Sunday is about him getting out of the grave. It is about him giving us a down payment with his Holy Spirit. It is about him making promises to us that he's coming back for us as his sons and his daughters, as, as, as he is our elder brother, as he's at the right hand of the Father. And so he doesn't say, I need to interview you. I don't know if you come from the right. He died for you just the way you are. He never told us that we needed to be good enough. He never told us that we needed to come from the right family. Hallelujah. He just said, will you accept me as your Lord and Savior? And I'll give you everything that you need. I'll give you my righteousness. I'll give you my goodness. I'll cover you with my blood. That's what Resurrection Sunday is all about. Look here in Galatians 2 and 16. Yet we know that people don't receive God's <laughs> approval by any efforts to follow the law and scripture but only by believing in Jesus Christ. So we believe in Jesus in order to receive God's approval by faith in Christ and not by our own efforts. People won't receive God's approval by their own efforts. And that's what I was trying to do. There was a time in my Christian walk that, you know, I never, I didn't think that... Uh, what Jesus did was good enough. And I, and I don't know if you can relate to what I'm saying, that I needed to help Jesus out some kind of way. I had to, you know, make sure that I, you know, did the right thing, that, uh, you know, I was, I was reading the word, uh, you know, 100 hours a week, and I was praying and fasting. You know, my, my goal was to become like Jesus Jr. And all of that doesn't mean anything if it's not done with the right heart, without the right motive. You can't add or take away from what God's already done. See, I kept trying to add to my goodness and righteousness so that God would like me more. The truth is, is that God loved me regardless. Same thing with you. You may be struggling with your faith. You may be struggling with your Christianity and say, man, if I do a couple of more things, then perhaps God will like me more, like me more. The truth is, is he loves you. He can't love you any more than what he's already done by going to the cross, sharing, shedding his blood, and getting up out of the grave to prove to each and every one of us how much he loves and cares about us. Maybe you were like me, that one day perhaps if I do enough things, I will feel qualified or good enough to be in a relationship with Jesus. Look here in Philippians 3 and 9. It says, and being found in him, not having the righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection 
and may share his suffering, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible, I may obtain resurrection from the dead. So what does this mean to the average believer? It means this, that our righteousness and our holiness comes from God. There's a word that you may not even have heard of. It's called imputed. And the imputed word of God is this, is that God basically gives us his righteousness. He gives us his holiness. He says, look, our best days. He says, our our best days, our righteousness is as filthy rag. There is none good, Jesus told uh, uh, the man of God. He says, there's none. Why do you call me good? There's no good but God. He was saying this, you don't have enough goodness to qualify. All of our goodness and righteousness comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. The most important thing I will say to you today is this. Jesus paid the price for the unqualified to be qualified through his death on the cross. That's where, that's where we get our righteousness. That's where we get our uh, holiness from. That's how we become qualified. It is through the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is because he buried our sins and then he rose up again and he's now seated at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us and he's coming back and he's coming back for us soon. So we need to get ready. This is what the gospel is all about. This is why the cross and resurrection are so important to every person on the planet. This is the good news that those who were unqualified now become qualified. 2 Corinthians 5 and 21 says this, For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. He gives us his righteousness. He gives us his authority. He gives us his power. He shares those things. You know, Madeline Laingo talks about being unqualified and says in a real, in a very real sense, none of us is qualified, but it seems that God continually chooses the most unqualified to do his work, to bear his glory. If we are qualified, we tend to think we have done this job ourselves. If we are forced to accept hard evidence about our lack of qualification. There's no danger in that we would confuse God's work with our own or God's glory with our own. Our lack of qualification sets us up to be qualified by God. God doesn't need our qualification. God doesn't need our righteousness. He doesn't. All he needs from us is our yes. That's all he needs. That's all he's looking for. Your yes and your availability. I've just learned over the years, you know, someone said to me years ago, how do you know uh, how the Holy Spirit or when the Holy Spirit is speaking to you? And what do you do when you know the Holy Spirit? How do you, what does the Holy Spirit sound like? And I said to them, he sounds like yes. Yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your way. That's what the Holy Spirit sounds like to me, saying yes to the word of God. And allow the resurrection power of the Holy Spirit to continue to lead me and to guide me. The same with you. Learn how to say yes to God. Allow him to lead you and allow him to guide you. And 2 Corinthians 3 and 4 says this. We are confident of all this because our great trust in God through Christ. It is not that we think we are qualified to do anything on our own. Our qualifications comes from God. God's the one that qualifies us. He's the one that makes things right for us. So the next time you're feeling unqualified to be used by God, remember this. He tends to recruit from the pit and not the pedestals. The power of the cross is what takes us and takes unqualified people like me and you and transforms us into the son's and daughters of the Most High. This Easter, this Resurrection Sunday, please allow the Holy Spirit to make you a permanent resident of the kingdom of God. We're discovering now more than ever, it's not about your membership or your church membership or your name or the church role. It's about, is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? This is an amazing time that we have. Yes, we may be locked in or shut in or sheltered in place 
But here we have a shelter, the wings of the Holy Spirit. Mary and I have been praying for you. We're believing God's best for you and your family. We're believing that God's protecting you and your home and your children. He's making a way out of no way. He's providing all the resources that you need. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, what a great opportunity. What a great day. Resurrection Sunday with all power, with all authority. Mike, Jesus at the right hand of the Father. What a great opportunity to give your life to Jesus. If you're watching or maybe you're reconnecting with him during this time, just pray. Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart. Cleanse me from my sins. I want to be a permanent member of the family of God. If you pray that prayer, you're part of the community. You're part of the family of God. God's not looking for qualified people. He's looking for people who will recognize their need for a Savior by humbling themselves. Mary and I are praying for you. Cross Point leadership, Pastor Michael, Deborah, and the rest of our leadership team, Pastor Frank, Tiffany, we just want you to know that you're loved, you're cared about. We're going to continue to believe and trust God. Until next Sunday, continue to walk by faith and not by sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Crosspoint, thanks for worshiping with us today. If today, for the first time, you have decided to follow Jesus, we want to encourage you and pray for you. Let us know by typing DECIDED in the comments below or text DECIDED to 401-200-6299. You've made such an important decision and we want to be with you on this journey. Prayer is a cornerstone of this ministry and we would love the opportunity to pray for you. Text your prayer request to 401-200-6299 or email us at prayer at crosspointri.org and we'll pass it on to our pastors and prayer team. Whether you're new to Crosspoint or call Crosspoint home, text hello to 401-200-6299 to fill out our digital connect card and help us connect with you. Please make sure to check us out at www.crosspointri.org and follow us on Facebook for the latest ministry updates. Now, a few announcements for you. Good morning and happy Resurrection Sunday. We hope that you've been blessed by our worship and words as we gather together to remember the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We have some announcements to keep us connected as we continue this journey of social distancing. Tuesday night, Pastor Steve is hosting a Bible study at 6 p.m. on the Book of Revelation. You can watch on Facebook Live. Wednesday night, our men's group is meeting online on Zoom. For more information, you can visit www.crosspointri.org. Don't forget you have access to Right Now Media. There you'll find some great resources for you and your family. To connect to Right Now Media, email Pastor Michael at pastormichael at crosspointri.org. I want to take a moment to talk about giving at Crosspoint. If you're new here, your giving is an opportunity to support what we're doing. But it's more than that. It's one of the ways that we can show our trust in God. You see, when you give, what you're saying is, Lord, I trust that you will provide for me even as I give. And God can be trusted to sustain you even though you have a little less. And I think that that's one of the huge takeaways about giving. We learn to trust and lean on God to provide for our needs. It's tempting to lean on ourselves and trust in our ability to generate financial security. But it's draining, isn't it? You see, God doesn't want you to feel that pressure. Anxiety is not a spiritual gift. Oftentimes, it's not enough to just say, okay, God, I, I trust you. Sure, we can sort of mentally believe that, but there's still something inside of us that wrestles with that statement. And that's why giving is so important. Giving helps us let go of our hold on money and the belief that we can provide for ourselves. Giving helps us release that anxiety and really place our trust in Him. Matthew 6 says, Your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. 
seek the kingdom of God above all above all else, excuse me, and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. And so let us pray this morning for the offering. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be together, to connect in this way. Uh, Lord, we, we're so thankful for the generosity of these people that are continuing to fund ministry, and we pray that these funds may be used to further the kingdom, to make sure that others know the good news. We thank you, Lord. Bless this offering and bless these people. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Crosspoint, be blessed.